Welcome to Covenant Keepers Ministries. Today is a Thursday, October 17th, 2024. And we're, we're discussing this week these two paths people get to choose to walk on. And we get to choose this every day of our life. We don't choose it once and it's good forever because we're faced with choices every day that determine whether we're walking the broad way, the wide, wide path, or the narrow way that leads to life. The broad way leads to destruction. And I realize that not all who are going to hear this message, listen to it, really want to hear it at all. Because it'll challenge you to get off the Broadway and quit making choices that cause you to follow the Broadway. Where's the fun in following Jesus anyway? Where's the excitement? Where the release from all the stress and pressures of life? So I, I want to share a story with you that I helped a family walkthrough. It was a foggy morning <clears throat> and the wife was on her way to work. She approached a four-way stop in the country where the visibility was so bad you couldn't see the crossroads nor the stop sign. But she knew the road because she traveled it every morning, Monday through Friday. And she entered the intersection to be met head on with a vehicle that couldn't see the intersection and didn't see the stop sign. And she was killed instantly. She attended a church I was pastoring. Her husband was gone at the time on a trip to Daytona for a Harley Davidson rally. She had a love for Jesus and had brought her two children to church with her regularly. Her husband just refused to come. In fact, he got the news and he was home as quick as he could get there from that Harley Davidson motorcycle rally in Daytona where he had partied every night and engaged in immorality, which in a horrible and tragic situation after she died, he attempted to reveal to her. I officiated at the funeral home for this funeral and at the conclusion of the funeral service, all but the immediate family was escorted out and the family remained. And I was standing at the, the head of the casket when the father, overcome with grief and guilt, literally in front of his two young children, jumped into the casket, begging his wife for forgiveness for his infidelity. It was a horrific scene, to say the least. It took three of the funeral directors to restrain him, pulling off her body in the casket as he was pleading with her to forgive him for what he had done, which I'm pretty sure he, she had no clue of. I immediately went to the children who were weeping and escorted them into a room where I held them and waited for the husband to come when he had calmed down. I had just a little time with that man after the funeral, spoke to him about God's offer of forgiveness, but it seemed to only ignite his guilt further and his shame for how he had mistreated and deceived his wife. He never entered our church after that funeral, but his children continued to come with their grandparents for a while and after a short while, they too ceased to attend despite our efforts. And both of these children, under school age, had watched and heard and observed this horrific scene at the funeral home. It was a traumatic experience for them. I never saw the father again. I've never seen him to this day that I know of. And I don't know what happened to those two little children or their father. After about a month, because I kept following up, calling him, he refused to take my phone calls. He refused to communicate with me. And I prayed even as I was preparing this devotional again, that God will have mercy upon him if he's still living and he'll come to know Christ. A week of bad choices led to immense despair 
exactly what Jesus said to Broadway. Look so attractive, man. It's just drawing me in. But its end is destruction. I don't believe it caused his wife's death. That's not at all what I'm saying. And I assured him of that when I spoke with him. And listen, Christians, listen, you who are believers today are watching this. Sometimes we sim- we have to simply trust God when bad things happen to good people without their having a choice in the matter, as was the case with this wife. But I want you to hear clearly what Jesus has spoken here. I want you to hear it so clearly that you will despise the broad way. Even when you're lusts and your desires just want to jump out of you and grab a hold of the broad way that you'll despise it before you choose the way that appeals most to your flesh and its desires contemplate what seed is being sowed and what harvest will come from it your future depends upon your choices today life's not only going to not always going to be fun and games but it sure can be full of joy and excitement if you follow Jesus. Are you following Jesus? Have you made that choice? I challenge you to it today. Pray with me right now. Lord Jesus, come. Lord Jesus, come. Come to us today in our need. Come to us today, God. If we're in sin, we renounce it. We repent of it. We turn to the living God and we want to follow the path of life. And Lord, if we've already made that choice, oh God, help us to not be attracted, not to let our eyes get glued on things, our mind to get glued on things, our our heart to pursue things that are wicked or ungodly, that may in fact give pleasure to our flesh, but lead to destruction. Oh, guard our hearts, help us guard our hearts, God, I pray, and lead us in the way everlasting for the glory of God and to the victory that you assured belong to those who follow Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We praise you. Amen. God bless you today. Get on the narrow way. Stay on that way because it leads to life everlasting. God bless you. Have a great day today.